We have made it all the way down to module 12 and in this particular module I want to talk to you a little bit about how sales tax works. Typically if you sell physical items in your store you will want to charge sales tax to your customers on those particular items. If it's a service you provide you do not usually charge sales tax and a good way to think about it is if you purchase the item and you paid sales tax then you would want to charge your customer for that. The way sales tax works is you always charge the tax for the county in which you delivered the physical items. If you have a storefront and people come to you, then you just charge the tax in that particular county. But like I said, if you ship out the items and you ship them all over your state, you would need to know for each place that you ship the items what that county's sales tax happens to be. Typically, there's a flat rate that everyone pays in the state and then each county the voters vote on the additional taxes. Sometimes those taxes are used for buses, sometimes they're used for road work, every county is different. You would need to go to your Department of Revenue website and they'll probably have listed there somewhere what the tax rate is per county. Now you could charge the same rate to your customers and you could put it in QuickBooks that way but you really need to break down the taxes individually in QuickBooks so that when you get ready to pay them you know how much to pay and which entity to pay them to and which taxes you're paying for. You're going to be asked all that when you go to actually pay the taxes. I want to show you in QuickBooks how to go through and set all that up so that QuickBooks will run reports for you and tell you all that information and make life a lot easier for you. Let me go ahead and start off by showing you where a sales tax would show up when you're actually invoicing a customer. I'm going to create invoices and then what you're going to notice is in the bottom of the screen there there's going to be a place where it asks you which sales tax rate does this particular customer get charged and that's going to be right down here. We've got a couple set up for the practice exercise and what I want you to see is that there are sales tax items and those are the individual items I told you that make up the one sales tax rate. Then there's a sales tax group. If you notice you can only put one thing in this field. So the way QuickBooks works is you create all the individual items and then you put them in this group and the group is the one you actually use when you're invoicing your customers. You're going to see as well that we won't have to pick it every time because we can set it up in the customer setup so that QuickBooks knows which tax rate they get charged and it pulls it automatically. Let me go ahead and close this. I want to show you where the sales tax items are set up. If you go to items and services and you scroll to the bottom of this list, you will see all of your sales tax items and your sales tax groups if you have any already set up and these are the ones we just saw in the drop down a few moments ago. You'll notice that the account they go back to is sales tax payable. What that means is that when we go ahead and set up the items we're going to have to forward this money to our State Department of Revenue so I'll show you how to set that up as well. The first thing I want to show you how to do is set up a sales tax item. I'm going to start by actually setting up the flat rate that every county in your state would pay. To set up any new item you right click and you choose new. One of your choices on the list where it says type will be a sales tax item or notice a sales tax group. If you do not see these on your list it means that when you set up your company file you told QuickBooks that you do not charge sales tax. You can actually go turn these back on if you go back to your preferences and turn on the sales tax option. You're always going to start with sales tax items. I'm going to set up the state tax because that's like I said the one that everyone in the state would pay. And typically it's somewhere around like 6 or 8 percent and I'll go ahead and just set this one up at 6 percent. Now the description here I don't ever really change that you don't need to because it's never going to pull the individual sales tax item onto an invoice anyway so I just leave sales tax for all of these. The tax rate is always a percentage and then you're going to have to put in the agency or the vendor that you collect this from. Now in some states you set up all these individual taxes and you mail it just to the Department of Revenue and they distribute it. 
other places you send it to those different agencies directly. You would need to check with your state to find out how that works in your state. For the tax agency I'm going to put in the Department of Revenue and then I'm going to go ahead and click OK and I'll quick add the Department of Revenue since they're not on the vendor list yet. Now you'll see down here your state tax and notice over here it says it's 6 percent. Now let's go ahead and set up a couple of others. I'll go ahead and right click in new. This time I'm going to say it's a sales tax item and I'm going to call this one local option. Just because two counties have a name that's the same for their sales tax does not mean that they charge the same rate so just kind of know that. Let's just say this one is 1% and it's going to go to our Department of Revenue again and I'll set up one more and in this particular case I will call it Capital Education. That's another one that's often used in different states. Let's say this one's 1% and it goes to our Department of Revenue again and I'll click OK. And now you can see I've got all three of those set up. So I've got my 6% for the state, there's local option at 1%, and the capital education at 1%. Now I can see I misspelled this, so I'm going to right click and edit. That's how you'd edit the name of any item. And I'm going to go ahead and fix that. And click OK. Now let me show you how to create a sales tax group. All you have to do is right click anywhere and choose the new option because this is a new group. I can name the group anything I want. I'll just call it, in this case, sales tax. Remember, if you have different counties, so you'll want to have different names for these. Here's where you choose the items that go in your group. I'm going to choose capital education. It's 1%. On the next line down, I'm going to click, and I'm going to choose my local option. And on the next line down after that, I'll choose my state tax. And now I've got my 8%. I'll go ahead and click OK and now that's ready to use. The next thing you have to look at with sales tax is your items can be taxable or not. I mentioned that if you have a service you provide it's non-taxable and if you have a physical part that you want to sell then it is taxable. Let me give you an example. Let's say I open up labor. I'll just right click and edit and you'll notice that right here it says this is a non-taxable item. So even if the customer pays sales tax, they will not pay sales tax on labor. Now let's look at another one, a physical part. We'll come down to an inventory part. If I right click on the door frame and look at it, then you'll notice this particular one is taxable. Again, if it's a physical part, you probably do charge sales tax on it. And then I'll click OK. You're going to have to go through all of your items and tell QuickBooks whether they are taxable or not. Now the third thing you need to know is that certain customers will be non-taxable. It could be that it's a nonprofit organization. When you look at your customer list, you're going to see in the customer setup there's a place where it says is the customer taxable or not. If I go ahead and double click on Sherry Smith down here, then you'll see sales tax settings on the left. And here's where it says is the customer taxable or not. If they are taxable, which item do they get charged tax on? Remember when you're picking your item to pick the group and not the individual items because you want to be able to pull the full tax onto the group. And here it is right down here. And the field that says resale number, what this is, is if I sell chairs and then Sherry also sells chairs in her store, she can apply to the state for a resale certificate. That means that she does not have to pay sales tax when she buys that chair from me. I would want to keep that resale number on file just in case I get audited. I'll go ahead and click OK. And those are the three things you have to know as far as sales tax is concerned. You have to tell it which taxes to set up. You're going to have to tell it if a customer is taxable or not and also is an item taxable or not. Now this does not go back to any prior invoices and charge sales taxes only from here on out. Let me go ahead and close some of these windows and we're going to go ahead and go over to part two and talk a little bit about how to actually invoice your customers and use the sales tax option. We're working in module 12 and we're talking about sales tax. We're on part two now. 
You've already gone through and set up your actual taxes themselves. You've already told QuickBooks which customers are taxable or not. And you've also told QuickBooks which items are taxable or not. Now you can start actually invoicing your customers and charging sales tax. I want to show you how to go through and do that correctly. And then we're going to talk about how you go through and actually pay those taxes in QuickBooks. I want to go ahead and go back to my customer that we set up, Tom Allen, and make sure Tom has sales tax attached to his particular account. Let me scroll up to the top of the list here. Here's Tom Allen. I'm going to right click and edit. And on the tab that says sales tax settings, we're going to see that he is taxable. And I want to go ahead and change this to the group that we created so you can see it called sales tax. Now I'm going to click OK. Now remember I said that it does not go back retroactively to any of the prior invoices. It's only anything you create from now on. I'm going to create an invoice for Tom Allen. You're going to see that as soon as we choose his name from the list, and we'll go ahead and use the sunroom as the job, I'm not going to pull in any billable cost, so I'll just go ahead and X out of that. But the first thing I want you to notice is it already has the group down here that we put over in his customer setup, so I don't have to change that. You could, though, if you realize this was wrong or something like that, but it automatically will pull it. Let's go ahead and pick a couple of items here. I want to pick blueprints, and I want you to notice that I'm going to charge him for two of these, and let's say they're $100 a piece, but notice they're non-taxable because this is a non-taxable item. Now let's say on the next line down that we go ahead and charge him for something that is taxable. How about let's go ahead and pick an appliance and let's just say it is a stove and we'll say one of these at 500 and notice that item is taxable. So what you'll notice is that at the bottom here next to sales tax it tells me how much tax that I've charged for that particular customer. That's all I have to do. I'm going to click save and close. Now it doesn't matter if you've received the payment yet or made the deposit, as long as you have an invoice in here, the sales tax will be showing as money that you will owe to your state. So you would go through the whole month and you would add all that up. Now sales tax is due by the 20th of the following month. Typically what they'll do is charge you a little penalty if you pay it after the 20th. If you have a company where you don't charge that much sales tax, you might be able to talk to your state and get it set up where you can pay it quarterly. But just go ahead and know that if you pay it monthly, you'll be good. The way this is going to work is once it's time to actually pay the sales tax, this is what you're going to do. I want you to notice that on your home screen, you have a button right here that says Manage Sales Tax. There's several things you can do here, one being setting up your sales tax preference. Remember I told you if you didn't see the sales tax item or the group on the drop down, then you would have to go through the preferences to turn it on and they've just got another way for you to do that here. You've also got some reports and this one here is the one you want, the sales tax liability report. Think about this. Remember, if sales tax is due by the 20th of the following month, that means that you're going to be looking at the rate for an entire month. My invoice was dated 12-15. That means I need to be looking at anything from December 1 through December 31, and then when I click down in here, you'll see it pop up. Now, typically, you're just going to see this portion right here in the middle. This is the one we just set up, so just ignore these. They're in here already for the practice exercise. But when you look across, you'll see it tells you the total sales. And it's going to tell you how much is the total for local option, how much for capital education, how much is for the state. It also tells you how much is taxable and how much is non-taxable in these two columns. The rate for each of these, how much tax was collected, and then the sales tax payable as of, in this case, December 31st. This is the column you want to look at right here, the tax collected, because that's what you're going to forward to the state. You don't want to forward more than you actually collected. You might pay a little bit less because you might get a discount for paying it a little bit early. But don't pay attention to this column. It's the column that says tax collected. 
most states now make you go online to actually pay these taxes. And when you go online, it will ask you, how much did you charge for capital education? It'll say, how much did you charge for local option? And it'll actually be asking you for the taxable sales number over here. Then what it'll ask for is how much for the state as a whole. And sometimes, the, depending on what the program is that the state is using, they may figure some of this out for you. When you're finished, remember, look for this number or a little bit less, because typically you will get a little discount if you pay on time. And that's how you know what numbers to plug in when you go to actually forward your sales tax. Now let me go back to the Manage Sales Tax window. After you've gone ahead and forwarded it to the state, you'll want to pay your sales tax in QuickBooks. And you will do that by clicking right here, Pay Sales Tax. What you want to do is make sure you have it coming out of the correct bank account. The check date, we'll just say we were paying this January 3rd. And the taxes that I would show would be through December 31. And then you'll see them pop up down here. You'll want to put in whatever you want in the check number field here. And then you'll just go through and check off all of the ones that you're going to pay. And you can see it equals my $40. Now, if I'm getting a little discount, then I'll want to change these to $4.98 or whatever it happens to be. And that's all you have to do. When I click OK, it's now going to be in the register. I'm going to flip back to home and go look and see if it's in there. And you're going to see that it will be set up as a sales tax payment. I'm going to go ahead and do a find for this. I'll use the go to option. I'm going to search for a payee and I'm going to say the Department of Revenue. And let's see what it comes up with. There it is right there. And you'll see that it is a tax payment and it says split because there are multiple different line items on that particular payment. And you can see it's $40 right there. That's how that will get into your checking account. Now one more thing I want to show you, I'm going to go back to the chart of accounts for a second. When you're looking in the chart of accounts, you will have an account that says sales tax payable and it will actually be an other current liability. You can see that right there. Anytime you collect the tax on an invoice, it will show up here as a balance and then when you pay it, it'll deduct it from that amount. So that's a little bit about how sales tax works. You want to make sure, like I said, that you have it set up correctly, and that way it'll be much easier when you go to actually pay your sales tax. That's all I've got for sales tax right now. Let's move over to Module 13 and talk a little bit about how payroll works in QuickBooks. Hey everyone, Ava here. Thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. Click over there to get the complete course for QuickBooks 2019. And click over there to watch the complete set of QuickBooks 2019 videos in this playlist. We'll see you next week with additional videos.